I want to talk to you all tonight. I want to thank you all that is listening on YouTube, watching on YouTube, rather. But I want to talk to you about a hindering spirit, a specific hindering spirit, and that is the spirit of setback and delay. I spoke briefly a few weeks ago on the hindering spirits, and the Lord delivered a lot of people. And, that, and this is in that hindering spirit family, the spirit of setback and delay. And I believe there are so many Christians, and, and I minister to so many Christians that have come to me, and they want to know. And they all feel like something is holding back my blessings. You know, I don't know what my calling is. My destiny is, I don't know. You know, I feel like that breakthrough is, is not happening. Where is God? Is anyone here or you that is listening ever felt that your blessings are being held up? Or, you, you know, you want to know what your calling and your destiny is? And, um, and we're going to get deep into this tonight because your blessing could be hindered. Amen. It could be hindered. And when I spoke on hindering spirits, one of the scriptures that I spoke on was 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, which says, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in the presence, now this is Paul speaking, not in the heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. So even Paul back then was hindered a lot Amen. by the devil. Paul did great things, healed people, delivered people. God really used him, raised the dead. He's done a lot of great things. But Paul went through a lot of hindrance, a lot of hindrances. He, he was thrown in jail for weeks, many times, bitten by snakes, shipwrecked. The enemy was always trying to keep him out of the his element was out in public. Out in public, Paul did some amazing things. So the enemy tried to hinder him from ministering out in public. So what did he do? He had him locked up. Paul got locked up a lot. He was hindered a lot. And even going places, Paul just said in 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 or 18, that Satan hindered us. So we know that Satan can hinder you. Amen. A lot of us have felt hindered. I, every, every week I'm ministering to people that felt, I am being hindered. Yeah. My destiny, my calling, my finances mm -hmm. are being hindered. I know that I'm supposed to get this. I know that I'm supposed to get that. But what is setting me up? What is slowing things down? I, if I had to just do um, just a Donnie's guess, I would say probably... Maybe 50 to 75 percent of Christians are being, their stuff has been held up by hindering spirits. Yeah. By hindering spirits. I, I really do believe that. Now, what do, hello, thank you. What the devil would do, he would use hindering spirits to hinder your stuff. Because he knows, especially in the, in, in, in the deliverance ministry and also in the church, that the pastors, you know, when you tell your problems to the pastors or to ministers, and they're going to target the demon that they believe that's behind that particular problem. For example, if you go to a pastor or a minister that's struggling with lust, okay, so they're going to deal with lust spirits. But if you're struggling with finances, they're going to deal with poverty spirits. Okay, if you're struggling with anger, we're going to deal with anger spirits. But rarely do you hear anyone dealing with hindering spirits. That's a spirit that Satan will use because he can hide that spirit. We don't, we don't expect them. I think the last time I actually taught on that spirit, we had a lot of manifestations. And I expect the same tonight. But I really want to focus on that spirit of setback and delay. So what is the definition of delay? It's the act of postponing, hindering, or causing something to occur more slowly than normal. It slows it up. 
I know I've, sp I've spoken to people that said they've been prophesied this and that, that this is supposed to have happened years ago, but it hadn't happened yet. That's not to say that it won't happen. I'm sure it will happen, but it's been hindered. It's been locked up or, or stolen uh, or just held up temporarily. Um, I, I do believe that um, what God has for you, I believe that you will get that. But I do think that the inner enemy can hinder or slow down, delay what God has for you. And so that spirit of setback and delay is a very powerful spirit that Satan used against the men and women of God. And so what I would like to do tonight is that we're going to be in prayer tonight to break that spirit. So we're going to do a lot of prayer tonight to break that hindering spirit of setback and delay, and, and we're going to command the blessings of the Lord that it will come back and it will fall on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who in here wants their blessings? Amen. Who in here wants to know their destiny, their calling, their purpose? Amen. In Jesus' name, their finances, Amen. their husband, their wives. I believe that husband and wives can be hindered too. I really do believe. I really do believe that uh, finances can be hindered. I, I, I believe um, your healing that God has for you can be hindered as well. And so what are some of the things that can hinder your uh, blessings, that can keep your stuff slowed or backed up? There are several things that can cause setback, things that we do. Number one, sin. Sin. If you are in willful sin, that can open the door and give the enemy a legal right to lock up or to hinder what God has for you. I mean, you've been prophesied this and that. Uh, a call in your anointing could be prophetic. Your anointing could be a gift of healing. But yet you're down here committing adultery or you've opened a door stealing or whatever that is. Don't you think that could hinder your calling, the anointing? Yeah, definitely could. Sin um, is, is, is a very, um, it's just, it's a, it's a big open door. And I've actually, for the, I think, I think one time, and I have, and I've, I've, I've cast out thousands of demons, but there was one time when I was in Boston, I ministered to a lady, and I dealt with a demon, and his name was Sin. And I can tell you, out of all the demons I've dealt with, that was the most violent, nastiest demon I've ever dealt with. And his name was Sin. And, and you can talk to any of the ministers here, probably uh, most of them uh, probably have never dealt with that spirit before. But it's an old spirit. It's an old spirit. And, it's, and, and it keeps us, a lot of us, in continual sin. Have you met people that, you know, Christians that, that were always, they had no accountability. They was always slipping and falling in sin and they were fighting it. They were constantly fighting. I don't want to do this particular sin, but you're in this struggle. It could be that spirit that's causing the hindrance and is one that the enemy uses against us. Number two, disobedience. Not yielding to the will of God can cause a delay in your life of a child of a child of God until that person conforms. You know, sometimes the Lord will, uh, the Holy Spirit will convict you. And uh, sometimes you don't, you don't yield to that conviction, you know what I mean, of the Holy Spirit. So you're not being obedient to what God is trying to do with you. He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to prune you. I don't know about you. Have you ever been pruned before? I remember when I first... When I first got saved, I started getting pruning. I'm like, oh, wow, what is that? You know what I mean? That hurts. But it's loving. It's, it's, God does it in a loving way. You know, but he'll, he'll prune you. He'll take you down to nothing to get your attention, to get, to get you in obedience. So God wants us to be in obedience. He does not want us to be in willful sin. And if you fall into sin, be quick to repent. He's a loving God. He wants us to, to, uh, to, to be, have a repentant heart like David did. And, and God wants to forgive us of our sins. So he wants us to have a repentant heart. Number three, 
This is another thing that can cause setback or delays. It is an unrepented attitude. Remember, the children of Israel spent 40 years on a journey that it could have, that it could have taken them 40 days. Right. Just because they didn't repent from their old ways, they were still worshiping idols. After they've seen many miracles, you know, the parting of the Red Sea, the feeding of, 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 of manas, uh, God has did so many different miracles with the people there. And they continue to worship other false gods and build those, those um, idols, and they worship them. They didn't get it. So they had an unrepentant attitude. Number four, things that can cause setback and delays is witchcraft. If there is one that have sent witchcraft against you, and I've heard people say, well, Pastor Donnie, let me tell you this about witchcraft. You have to believe in that stuff for it to work. Oh, well, that's a lie. <laughs> you don't have to believe in that stuff for that work. How many of you heard that? You got to believe in that stuff for it to work. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, all they need is an open door. You know, a curse cannot land without a cause, but if they have a, they have a cause... And then that witchcraft could come in. And, and, and how witches do, they built an altar. This is how most witches do. They have an altar that they build. And we talked about earlier tonight about crystals and how those crystals are used as in, they can create altars with crystals and things like that. And so, and witches would go to that altar and pray and summon these demons and they would have a, a picture of you in some instances or they would have something of you. Or uh, they would speak your name. Or different things that they would do and send that assignment against you. And witches are very, very organized. Some of them are. And they have a network of witches. And they have covens and things like that. And they have one coven. could be up to, you know, three to 50 to a, a network of hundreds of witches. And they can be assigned against you. They can be assigned against you. And so their job is, is to hinder you. And I, I can't tell you how many witches or demons. And these teams can tell you. They, they're manifesting people and they'll tell us, we have to stop him. We have to hinder him or her. And that's what they do. Witches will hinder and try to stop uh, what God has planned for you. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I want every Christian to know this. And when, you, when God has a plan and a purpose for you, and a lot of you have been called, you, a lot of you are anointed, and you know that. And a lot of you have been called and, 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 and not operating in what God has called you to do. But regardless whether you've been called or not, the enemy will attack you. And that's why we have to pray for one another. We have to use our spiritual weapon to fight the enemy back. And just know that God is with us. We know we focus on Jesus Christ. God is with us, and he is here for us. Amen? Amen. So we're not to be afraid of witchcraft. We're to pray against it. That's what God, we don't, we don't, we don't just sit back and lay back and, and cry, oh, I'm getting beat up, this and that. Fight back. Fight back. Know who you are. You are a warrior in Christ. You have spiritual authority over the enemy. Luke 10, 19 tells you that. God has given you the authority in Mark 16, 17 to 19 to cast demons out, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. I think someone mentioned earlier today that you have to know who you are. You have to know your spiritual authority. The devil knows when you don't know your spiritual authority. He knows when you walk in fear. You know, demons should fear you. Witches should fear you. And, and I say that humbly, you know, because I know what is in me. Great is he that is in me than he is of the world. And as I told the story, uh, I was with, um, with a group. We were in the country of Panama. I was invited. It was about 14 of us. And uh, we went to this one church, and all of the pastors got hit with witchcraft. I mean, I was at a point where I, was, I wasn't able to speak. And, uh, and all the pastors were feeling weird and hit like this. And we just stepped back. No, 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 no. Well, we started praying against that. And that thing broke and things like that. And then we was able to go in and 
do what God has called us to do. And so they tried to hinder us. And, now, and the Lord pointed out one of the witches that was operating in one of the people there. So I went to that person. I confronted that witch. I said, it was you, wasn't it? And then that witch came up and said, you all, this is our territory. That's what the witch told me. And I said, but he's, they said you, the witch says, you all make us nervous. And that's how it should be. You, as a man and woman of God, need to make these witches nervous. In Jesus' name. And when a witch says, uh, you make us nervous, uh, you all make us nervous, that was music to my ears. You know, and then, you know, and we just commanded them to go and broke that thing off in Jesus' name. They need to be afear, uh, afraid of you. And, uh, and you know, and, 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 and I'm not knocking people. And I know we all have to grow up in Christ and know who we are. But, you know, just know the God that you serve. Don't be a defeated Christian. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So another way um, how another way that these uh, spirit of delay and setback can get in can get in is through what is called legal rights and um, legal rights or if the enemy has a legal right to target you, he will. And a legal right can be generational curses, the sins of your ancestors. Sins travels. Know that sin travels. It, well, great grandmother, great great grandmother was a witch, cursing people left and right. Great great grandfather was a murderer. Don't you think those sins are going to travel down the generations? So the demons say, "Oh, let's pick this person. Let's go. We'll skip this generation. Let's go to the next one. Let's get this one. He has an open door. He was molested. We can get into him. You know what I mean? So these open doors, these spirits can come in through generational." curses and, and 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 that's how a lot of these demons have these legal rights and it's really sad some of us some of us are victims and even though you are a victim that could be an open door which could give the devil a legal right to cause setback and delays i had a gentleman that i ministered to lord bless him lord bless him um actually i think ministered to him yesterday last last night he was raped at four years old by his own father. Jesus. And, um, and, and he had a big open door. And, and he's a grown man in his 40s and still getting raped. Jesus. He says, I've, I've been violated for the last seven years every day, every night. Yes. Open door, legal right. And a lot of his blessings were being held up. Because of our legal rights. So we have to break those legal rights. That's why it's important for every Christian to go through deliverance. To break those legal rights of the sins of being violated as a child. To break those legal rights of the sins of her ancestors. And to just to get rid of that. So our blessings cannot be hindered. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the Lord has given me a word to, for everyone tonight. And uh, so, but before I give, give you this word and give you the scripture, what is keeping you on that mountain? Or what's keeping you from walking in your destiny? I can guarantee you there are some of you in here right now, you know your calling. But you're not moving in it. You're not operating in it. What is keeping you there? It may be those that are listening. You know that you've been called. You know you're anointed. You know you have a gift of either healing or a gift of prophecy or whatever that gifting is, but you're not operating in it. What's keeping you stuck? Uh -huh. You're being stuck. There's so many Christians that are being stuck, gifted, anointed, and they're stuck and not operating in it. What is keeping you from being stuck? Think about it. Think about it. Is it fine? Well, I can't afford to, to, to I don't have the money to, to start a ministry or to, to start ministering to people. Or oh, I'm going to wait on my husband uh, to help me in ministry because I, I don't want to get out there by myself. Or, uh, well, you know, I'm, I, I don't like being around people, uh, talking to people, you know, because I, I don't know how to speak. I'm not a great speaker. What is it? What is keeping you on that mountain? What is keeping you on that mountain? What is keeping you from walking what God has called you to do? 
If you know that you have a calling and anointing, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. If you believe you have a calling and anointing. That's pretty much 95% of this room. Now, the next question is, are, are every one of you walking in it? So what are some of the things that are keeping you stuck? And as I was asking that question, as I, as I was praying and I was thinking about this message, the Lord took me to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. The Lord says, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, you have dwelt long enough on, that, on this mountain. God says, turn and take your journey. And go to the mountain of the Amorites. To all the neighboring places in the plain. In the mountains and in the lowlands and in the south and the sea coast. In the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon. As far as the river, the river Euphrates. God is saying, you've been on that mountain long enough. Yes. He gave me that word. Tell my people they have been on that mountain long enough. It is time. God deals with that spirit of delay head on. You stayed on that mountain long enough. Turn and resume your journey. Resume your journey. Don't worry about the finances. The Lord will provide. If he's called you to it, he will get you through it. If he's called you to it, he will get you through it. He will provide. You have to do your part. God would do his part. You've been in that mountain long enough. Some of you have been in that mountain for a long time. And I can tell you, I can tell you, when you step out, of, when you step out, all you can expect the enemy to try to push you back. You're going to expect the attacks of people. But you got to get through it. You got to continue to move forward. No matter what obstacles come your way. And he's going to use people closest to you. You think you got this gift of healing? That's not a gift of healing. Everybody knows that. You know, your grandmother was a witch and she did that. You know, think about it. People will say the, the weirdest things to get you off of your track. And that's a hindering spirit operating in them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But in the midst of setbacks, we have to be obedient. Yes. We have to be obedient in the midst of setbacks. There's going to be setbacks, but we have to be obedient. Think about what Moses did. Moses always had a call in his heart to deliver his people. Am I right? Uh -huh. And when he saw the Egyptians striking the Israelites, so what did Moses do? He killed the Egyptian, right? And then he tried to hide the body, but the body got exposed the next day. You know, so what did, what did Moses do? Moses hid himself, ran and hid himself because he was ashamed, you know, and that's really sad. But when he realized that secret, his, that secret murder was known, Moses went from being in Pharaoh's palace, from Pharaoh's palace to herding sheep up in the mountains. Are you herding sheep in your mountains? Are you herding sheep? Forty years later, God called Moses to deliver his Israelite from Egypt. And Moses finally accepted God's assignment. Finally accepted God's assignment. Timing. He, you know, Lord made the best of that timing. But he got called a long time ago. A lot of you are on that mountain herding sheep. The Lord says, turn away. You've been on that mountain long enough. It's time to move in what you're called to do. And I know some of you personally. And I know that you're anointed. I know that it's time. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let me see. I just got a few more minutes. I want to say some prayers. We're going to break this yoke of setback and delay. And a lot of these, these setbacks and delay are really strong. So that means that witches 
have created demonic altars mm -hmm. to keep you in bondage. Because a lot of people have been on that mountain for a long time and they prayed and prayed and prayed and they're still stuck. They're still confused. They don't know how to get off that mountain. Amen. So we're going to say some prayers to destroy those altars in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is anybody getting this? Yeah. It's just me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to ask um, Elder Marie Watson to, um, we're going to start off. I'm going to have her read Psalms 11 and 3. Psalms 11 and 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Okay, I want everyone to say this prayer after me. O oh Lord, my God, oh Lord my God, my Redeemer and Savior, my Redeemer and Savior. because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to separate myself and my family members from satanic, demonic, occultic, marine, and witchcraft altars that are active or operating in our fathers, mothers, wives or husbands foundation in the name of Jesus O Lord my God my Redeemer and Savior I release the God upon every foundational ancestral and family altar where the umbilical cord Hairs, Hairs, body parts, body parts and, or and or garments of myself, of myself and, my and my family members have been kept, have been kept for, evil for evil purposes in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. First Amen. Samuel twenty-eight thirteen. And the king said to her, do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. Okay. O oh Lord, my God, oh Lord, my Redeemer and Savior, my Redeemer and Savior. I, use I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. to bind and paralyze, to bind and paralyze. Evil, and evil and demonic spirits that dwell on the earth and that are assigned to hinder me, or sit back, and my family members, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 12. For we, rest, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. O oh Lord my God, oh Lord my, God my, Redeemer, my Redeemer and Savior, and Savior I, use name, I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to destroy, to destroy and, nullify and nullify demonic, demonic or satanic agreements, satanic agreements between rulers of darkness, rulers of darkness and, high places, and high places and occultic or demonic forces of the earth fashion against me and my family members in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Revelation 17 and 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. O Lord, my God, o Lord my, God, my, Redeemer, my Redeemer, and Savior, and Savior I, use I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to destroy and nullify, to destroy and nullify evil, agreements evil agreements between marine spirits, between marine spirits and, demonic and demonic forces of the earth, of the earth 
fashioned against me and my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus 20 and 4. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Hallelujah. O Lord my God, my Redeemer and Savior, I use the name of Jesus Christ to command Holy Ghost fire to consume altars of the earth or graven images are being used to project negative energy or aura against me and my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to do a few more. Ezekiel 21, 21. For the king of Babylon stands at the parting of the road, at the fork of the two roads, to use divination. He shakes the arrows. He consults the images. He looks at the liver. Oh, Lord, my God. My Redeemer and Savior. Any strong man. A woman, a woman that will ever rise, correction, ever rise. that will ever raise altars, ever raise altars. at the T junctions, -junctions. Roundabouts, roundabouts, or crossroads, or crossroads. To, use to use divination, enchantments, enchantments. or invocations, invocations, in order to release, order to release. Arrows, of arrows of affliction, sickness, sickness. sickness. Accidents. accidents, death. Against me and my family members will forever fail in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Exodus twenty twenty four. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you, and I will bless you. O oh Lord, my God, oh Lord my God, my Redeemer and Savior, my Redeemer and Savior I, decree and declare I decree and declare that demonic, that demonic occultic, occultic, or satanic altars, or satanic altars of, the earth, of the earth that will ever harbor the names, the names pictures, pictures, body parts, body parts garments, garments, etc., of myself, of myself, my family, my family as, a contact, as a point of contact to fight or afflict us. We we'll receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, we just got just a few more. Exodus twenty twenty five. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it out of hewn rock. And if you use your tool on it, you have profaned it. Oh Lord, my God. Lord, my God. My Redeemer and Savior. My Redeemer and Savior. My Rock of Ages. My Rock of Ages. I use the blood of Jesus Christ. I use the blood of Jesus Christ to cancel and nullify. Cancel and nullify the effects of any altar of stone. Energize with satanic oil or, satanic or, or blood, blood being used to fight me, used to fight me and, my and my family members in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, yes. and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. And spread them out like a tent to dwell in. Amen. O oh Lord, my God, my Redeemer and Savior, I use the name of Jesus Christ to command the angels of God to destroy satanic or demonic circles of altars of the earth. Or the names of myself, the name of myself 
and my family members are being mentioned for shame, for evil, stagnancy, setback, limitations. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 16 and 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. O Lord my God, my Redeemer and Savior, I decree and declare that demonic or satanic gates of the earth erected to hinder me and my family members have been destroyed by the angels of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, did I give you Hosea 13? Mm -hmm. okay. Hosea 13, 14. And I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. O Lord my God, Lord my, God my Redeemer and Savior, my Redeemer and Savior I decree and declare that altars of the earth in any graveyard being used to project evil outcomes against me and my family members have been destroyed by the angels of God in Jesus name amen you know and I've heard of that of, of people erecting uh, Altars and graveyards. Some of you have heard that too. This is this stuff happens. It's really real. Okay, did I give you twelve? Numbers twenty three one. Yeah. Okay, that'll be our last one. Numbers twenty three and one. Then Balaam said to Balak, "Build seven altars for me here, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams." And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. O Lord, my God, o Lord my, God, my, Redeemer my Redeemer and Savior, I command the angels of the Lord, the of the Lord to, destroy to destroy altars of the earth, of the earth where blood sacrifices of four-legged animals, four animals, marine creatures, marine creatures fowls, of fowls of the air, creepy things, creepy things animals that live on trees, and human, beings and human beings are being used against me, used against me. and my family members. my family members. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of these uh, altars that we're using to, the, to, to, uh, to break and destroy is, uh, is a really powerful book by Overthrowing Evil Altars by uh, Pastor uh, Yuzor Nidekwu. Very powerful book. So I suggest you get this book. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to say a prayer for everybody. I'm going to ask Pastor Toma to uh, prepare the music. And I'm going to say a prayer to get this stuff stirred up. If, is anyone feeling anything already? No? Well, hopefully you will in a minute. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you use me as a vessel, Father. As I pray for even those that are watching this YouTube. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every hindering spirits. I command you to loose these men and women of God. Loose them in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. These men and women of God will not be hindered anymore in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. I command all hindering spirits, spirits of setback and delay. Loose these men and women of God in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of setback and delay. I command you in the name of Jesus to loose these men and women of God now in Jesus' name. We declare and decree there will be no more setback and delays. And we used the word of Proverbs 631. If the thief is caught, he must return everything back sevenfold. You, spirit of delay, will return back everything you've stolen sevenfold from everyone that is listening or watching this, this uh, teaching right now in Jesus' name. 
I command you to go in Jesus' name. I command you to release their finances, release their destinies, release their calling, release them in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of their finances. Release their calling, destiny, purpose, design, goals. I command you to release them now in Jesus' name. And any finances that's been held up, I command you to release them now in the name of Jesus. Release finances. Release destinies. And I command you right now to come out of the name of Jesus. I, Father, I ask, Lord, that you would bring everyone off that mountain in Jesus' name. And, Father, direct them to what you've called them to do, Lord. Call them, Lord. We call them to great things. Lord, you've called them. Lord, your word says you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us, Lord. So, Lord, we just declare and decree that everyone is listening, everyone is here. They will, they will walk in what you've called them to do in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against all setback and delays in the name of Jesus. Spirit of setback, go in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. No more delays in Jesus' name. No more delays. I declare and decree breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Come out of the name of Jesus. I speak breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Loose them, loose them. Come out, come out. Come out of the name of Jesus. Go. I command the spirit of setback and delays. No more setback. No more setback in the name of Jesus. Come out of the name of Jesus. Go. I command you now in Jesus' name to loose them. Loose them. Come out. Spirit of setback and delay. Go in the name of Jesus.